Professor Nielsen, it's a pleasure to meet you. So we're going to discuss the results of the Emanate trial, which were released in the late-breaking uh, trials today at ESC. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the trial? Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Yes, uh, the, the Emanate trial is a randomized controlled trial investigating uh, uh, apixaban, one of the new oral anticoagulants versus uh, warfarin vitamin K antagonist, which we usually have used, in patients undergoing uh, direct current cardioversion. And um, they investigated uh, number of events, uh, stroke events and bleeds within the first 30 days after cardioversion uh, mm. with these two uh, treatments. And they, uh, they included altogether 1,500 patients. That's and right, yeah. They were randomized equally into the two groups uh, and, uh, and followed forwards. And uh, what they, uh, their main uh, finding was that uh, if you compared uh, strokes between the two groups, it, it was different in favor of apixaban. But mm. if you looked at also the other endpoints, uh, bleeds and deaths, there was no significant difference between the two groups. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think actually the most important finding was that the event number mm. uh, in both groups uh, was very low. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I was, I was looking at the presentation in, earlier on and there are only six strokes, is that right? To yeah, the treatment? only yeah. six strokes among these uh, 1,500 patients. So, so. And, but, but, but that is um, that, that's accordant with yeah. what we know from, from other randomized trials as well as observational data that um, uh, if patients are proper, properly anticoagulated, it is not so dangerous yeah. to do cardioversion. Yeah. And I think that is very, very reassuring. Yeah. For, yeah. So do you think the improvement was, um, was genuine or is it just that we might have just picked up a very small number of, uh, um, of cases in the warfarin arm? Which yeah. I, 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 if, if it, was it a spurious result or do you think that's a real advantage to using a Pixaban? Because I don't think we've seen that um, yeah. with the other yeah. direct oral anticoagulants, to, 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 have we? To, to be honest, I do not think that we can rely on statistical comparisons yeah. uh, having only six events. Yeah. Um, uh, th th this is not reliable. And yeah. uh, the study is not powered to do a superiority uh, comparison, comparison uh, sure. between these two with that few events. So it has to be considered exploratory. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we cannot say that apixaban is better. Yeah, but I I if we take it together with the other trials we have, yeah, it seems as if the risk is close to similar. Yeah, yeah, uh, between the new oral anticoagulants and uh, and uh, BKA. So, so I think you you can use. Uh, I think these data support. Yeah, that 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 you can use whatever you find best. Yes, Noax or BKA. Yeah, we have no indication that that one is uh, truly inferior. Yeah, with respect to stroke or, or, it, or bleeds. It was very interesting because I, the uh, a meta analysis of all the other s similar studies with the other yeah. uh, DOACs were was presented as well uh, in the discussion and yeah. again the, the, it seemed very similar. But there seemed to be a slight trend towards uh, using a DOAC, yeah, which I, would agree with what I, what I, emanate. I, I, I agree if we if if we, yeah yeah maybe. The, 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 the incidence is a little lower with the newer or mm. anticoagulants. But um, if we should say that, that we should have a properly powered randomized trial, mm. and that would require, as they had calculated, around 50,000 patients yes. to, to, to do that. And then you would be able to show that using a DOEG or a NOEG or whatever to call it, um, instead of vitamin K antagonist, you may save one or two strokes yes. treating 1,000 patients. Yes. Um, and uh, I agree it's not realistic to do it. And in my mind, it's not, it, it, it would be um, questionable from an ethical point of view to yeah. put that many money yeah. and effort yes. in, into proving that. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think, I guess, one kind of clinical challenge that we have when, use, when, when doing cardioversions and using uh, DOACs is, is this issue of compliance because yeah. with warfarin you can always measure the INR yeah. to provide you with some assurance that the patient is, is taking the medication but with, we don't necessarily do that with DOACs. Some, some, no. some centers have tried to use transesophageal echo to guide the cardioversions. What, what are your thoughts on that and, and in the context of this trial? Yeah, um, yeah that, that is true. That is, uh, that's a true difference between these two mm. uh, kinds of treatment. Um, 
I, I think we, what, what we do in our institution, and I think most cases, in most places, we, we ask the patients and they have to reassure us yeah. they, that they have really taken it. Yeah. Uh, and they are informed that it is important that you answer this question correct. And, and, and we, we believe them. Yeah. And in this study, what, 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 what were measures were performed to, uh, to assess for compliance? Was there a transesophageal echo done or in the m and In the m yeah. they, they, they did a, a transesophageal echo in more than half the patients, as I remember, 800 and something patients. Okay. Yeah. But not, every, not universally? Not, not, not all, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. So despite that, so even if there were p- people who said they had taken their yeah. medication and hadn't, I, I, even I'm then we're, we're not seeing a, a big increase in no. events, exactly. which is reassuring. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it is, yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Um, so Professor yeah. Nielsen, it's a pleasure to Thank talk to you about this. Yeah. It, indeed it was. Thank you.